Hello lovely friends, it's Sarah from Funky Fossil here, back with another episode of my Make It Sunday, kind of weekly videos that I do on YouTube, just to give you some ideas for using your Funky Fossil products or anything you have in your craft stash, getting creative and trying some different techniques um, and enjoying yourself on a, on a Sunday or any day of the week, whenever you're watching this, you can um, get your papers, your dyes, your stamps and stencils out and um, get making with me. So this week, I thought, I'm, I've obviously still got in a very autumnal theme in my mind, but I really wanted to kind of go back into the kind of a woody, natural um, type of journal page. And these are the products I've pulled out to work with today. I don't have a completely um, kind of firm idea in my mind about what page I'm gonna create, but on the page I want to use our fabulous leafy wreath dye, uh, our A5 woodcut birds, they're just gorgeous, large, nice large images, they're, these are great for journal pages, and our poetry of trees 8x8 eight eight paper pad. This is pretty low on stock now, um, so I definitely wanted to get another video in before um, it's no longer available and I can't do any more inspiration with it but the pages in this are beautiful and take you through all four seasons in nature, beautiful for background, scene setting, and you get these wonderful close-ups of the tree rings as well. So they're the kind of the core ingredients that I know I'm gonna use in my journal page today. They're the stars of the page. I know I'm gonna to want to use some embossing powders and we'll talk through the colors that I use as we go, but I'll need some embossing powders, I'll need some inks, and I'm going to need a circle die because I want to create an aperture on our page so that we can look through from one page to the next, which is one of my absolute favorite things to do. So let me get my journal and put it out on the mat in front of me. What's my journal already? It's not a great start here. But... So I've got my A5 um, spiral bound journal um, and this is the one where I do quite a few of the pages. I've got my, the one from uh, last week with our beautiful stag's head there with the cloudy stencil. This is one we did in our Why Not Wednesday recently, the live where we cut up papers and did a bit of stamping and inking in the background. Here's our Christmas pages from a couple of weeks back. So this is the journal I'm gonna create in. And what I've done already uh, is just literally drawn a circle around this circle die. I have no idea where this one is from and I literally just eyeballed a die that I thought would work nicely in terms of the scale of our leafy wreath die. So this is the, the die that I'm going to be using as a kind of the frame on this top page and this circle just about kind of gives me a, a decent aperture that this is going to, the, the, uh, the leaves are going to be able to um, sit around. Now of course this page is in a journal so if I had a loose leaf journal where I was able to take my pages in and out I'd be able to take the page out and do my die cut circle and all would be good but obviously I can't run my journal through my die cutting machine so I'm going to have to um, hand cut this with my craft knife uh, and a cutting mat so this is not going to be um, uh, pretty or perfect by any stretch but I'm not too worried because I'm obviously going to be covering this with papers and with the uh, with the die cut wreath. So it's not it doesn't have to um, be a perfect circle. It just needs to be enough that I can um, see through to the page below. So I'm going to turn the camera off while I do this, just because I'm going to put my head over head into shot and be manoeuvring this around. But all I have done is just put a cutting mat behind my a journal page so that I obviously am not going to be cutting through more than one page. I've got my craft knife, I'm going to do that and then come back and show you the uh, probably very messy results. See you in a second. Right, well you can ignore what I just said <laughs> about drawing a circle and then cutting it out because then of course I was trying to line my paper up over the top to create an aperture and realised it was just easier to cut a circle die aperture out of your paper and then use that as a template on the the um, the page that you're going to add it to, draw around that on your page and then cut with a, a knife rather than trying to line it up the other way around. So I hope I'm making sense. 
I die cut this circle, put my page where I wanted it to be, drew around with pencil, and then I cut out with a craft knife. You can see it's not exactly perfect, but it is totally gonna do the job for me. I'm not worried about these pencil marks. I could erase them, but they're not gonna be visible. We're gonna be covering it with our patterned paper. So that's how I've got my page started. Of course, we'll be able to see through to the other page. And so I've already cut a page uh, that will fit from the Poetry of Trees paper pad of the tree rings. So already, I think that looks super cool already, don't you? Now, if I wasn't gonna be putting any further embellishments or framing around this aperture, I would probably put some green ink around here just to um, kind of camouflage the edge where things aren't completely lined up. But because I'm gonna be putting my leafy wreath uh, on the page, then I don't need to worry about it. What I've done ahead of time, is excuse my arm uh, is i've cut lots of wreaths so i've cut them out of a beautiful kind of pearlescent dark brown i've cut them out of a green cardstock and i always like cutting once i've got my cutting machine out and i'm doing some die cutting i always cut more than i need because a die like this which is kind of a a perennial you know it can be made uh, seasonal for whatever kind of make you want to create because this could be a spring wreath you could do it in oranges and browns for autumn you could put berries on it for christmas so given it's a um a dye that works for so many occasions i just cut lots of them when i've got the, when i've got the dye out and my machine now i've also i've also cut it in white because what one of the things i wanted to do in our um session today is look at ways of customizing your um your die cuts so it's great to cut them out of patterned paper and colored cardstock because you've got an immediate um kind of embellishment that's ready to go there but i really certainly with wreaths i like to make them a bit fuller and i like to layer them up so i'm going to be wanting to put two down on my page and that looks really cool i really like that white um kind of popping uh, forward above the dark brown and on the page but equally, it's really, really cool to ink and heat emboss your um, die cuts to give them a whole new look. And that's what I think you'll have a go at doing now. So I'm just putting my um, wreaths to one side. Let me get a piece of cardstock so we're not... So let's ink blend. Let's put some ink onto our uh, white wreath first. Now, you again, you could ink blend onto a piece of... Um, uh, paper and then do your die cutting from that but equally I quite like to um, colour my die once it is cut because I can be a bit more purposeful a bit, bit, bit more conscious of where I add my colour to so I've just picked up some general kind of um, woody kind of colours the greens and a bit of rusty hinge just to give it a hint of autumn but I'm not Let's say go full out autumnal here. And I'm conscious that the layer I think I'm going to use below is brown. So again, I'm wanting contrast in the colours. So one of the lovely things about the uh, blending brushes is they shouldn't, they might do if, you, if you're really heavy handed, but you can see here, I'm using it on this kind of non-slip mat um, and the brush isn't picking up the leaves and bending and and taking the um the die uh, the die cut out of shape so because the brush is so forgiving and because the mat is holding the um the paper in place for me i'm not i'm not wrestling with it too much just some rustic wilderness let's put some peeled paint on as well just a slightly different shade of green i've not um that's lovely pop of green it's like a lot it's been like crushed olive this peel paint i don't know i'll have to put them side by side to see how different they are um but yeah i haven't changed my brush i haven't um cleaned my brush i've just gone straight from one green to another because i think they're close enough not to cause me any issues now i'm planning to add some heat embossing uh, some um, embossing powder to this wreath as well so uh, a lot of this may well get covered up but when I'm wanting to sprinkle embossing powders onto my die cut it's always I, I think I prefer to have some colour down already so I'm not um, giving myself too much of a challenge to make sure every every kind of um, 
part of the dye is uh, catching that embossing powder, particularly a dye like this where obviously you've got your open spaces with your leaves. Um, I just, I'm going to want my embossing powders to kind of enhance it rather than completely cover it. Just add a bit of texture, but this looks really cool already. So I'm adding just my rusty hinge in three spots. It's a habit I find hard to break, just kind of thinking about those threes. They don't need to be evenly spaced. This isn't about a symmetry. It's just having that colour repeating. And it looks, I really love how it kind of looks a bit different where it's uh, where I've gone over some green and where it's gone over the white, so you get kind of a different tones of that orangey colour. So I think that looks really cool as it is. And you could be combining it with um, the green as a, as a bottom base, and that would give it some depth. That's lovely, isn't it? Or you could, uh, if you're going for a really contemporary look on a card front. Uh, you could be layering it, layering it up on some white and that would give it a kind of a, a very much a fresher and lighter feel, a really airy feel. So um, think about adding your um, inks to your dies, your die cuts, not your die. Don't, don't do it to your die. I don't think that would really help. Um, and, uh, and, and kind of customise them. That's so nice. Right, let me just give a quick spritz of water and then we'll... We'll have a bit of a play with some embossing powders and see what difference that makes. There are just, in fact, I'm thinking I must do a video on this. There are so many different mediums and ways you can customise your dyes and really transform them. So, um, for example, with this, um, if I was doing a different kind of shape or design um, and I wanted to use my kind of silvers and golds embossing powders, it would end up looking like a metal embellishment. You could use your foils on this, you use your gilding flakes. There are just so many cool um, ways that you can transform what is basically just some paper that you run through a die cutting machine. Let me have a look and see. So I've got my embossing ink pad, very messy embossing ink pad. And then I've, I've picked up some colors that I thought would go with our theme today. I've got Olive Grove and I've got Tuscan Terracotta. So they're from our Mediterranean Moods Trio. And I've got another wild wow powder here. This is Twiggy, inspired by Joe Firth Young because I love the, the rich browns in that one. But I probably use that one sparingly. This, this is a sprinkle on one, I think. So this is another thing to consider with your embossing powders. It's that um, mixing them on your project uh, and creating different combinations. You don't always just need to use the olive grove, for example. Um, combine your embossing powders and see how they can look different um, because one of the really cool things and this is what I've been learning as I've been um, working with WOW is of course the different granulations of powder uh, what what it looks like in the pot um, different colors will suddenly rise to the surface or become more prominent uh, when you heat set it you're never quite sure what you're going to get because you've got different colors already in the one pot and if you've got some um, coarser grains and some finer grains, then again, uh, the, the effects will look different. So you saw me um, smoosh my embossing ink onto the um, die cut. I'm not worried about whether I've covered the whole of it, to be fair. It's, um, it's just kind of catching, catching most of it. And I'm going to just sprinkle around, just picking up the embossing powder with my fingers quite a generous sprinkling of the olive grove. This is a lovely colour because it's got some golds and greens together. Um, so I'm going to be quite generous with this one because I think this one has a nice, a nice fit with our colours. And then of course I'm going to, what I'm going to do is lift and flip my wreath because what I don't want to do is shake the powder all over. We know it's sticky all over because we've, we've got our ink all over that wreath. Um, and I don't necessarily want to cover it all with that one colour. So when you've got a sprinkling of a powder on there, then if you just flip it, it will just fall directly down rather than spreading over your uh, entire design. I'm struggling with my nails with this non-slip non mat, so. I do need to get my nails seen too. They're getting a bit too long. I don't like long nails. So 
So Tus Tuscan terracotta has some kind of browns and oranges. So this will um, pick up on the shades with that rusty hinge that we've already got down with the ink. So I can put in paprika on my die cut. Be a nice orangey shade there. This one I find looks a bit more muted than you expect when it's um, heat set because some of those browner shades do then come through. Now you could absolutely um, just heat set each colour as you go. You don't need to do what I'm doing here and sprinkling them all together to see how it looks because um, you can totally just build up your design one colour at a time and what I quite often do if I'm looking to get a really chunky uh, this this uh, twiggy here is the darkest so I'm probably oh, I was I was going to be the most sparing and then dropped a whole load but I don't want to make this wreath too close to the dark brown underneath that's why I want to be a bit more sparing I'll leave that there. Um, what was I saying? So yeah, you can um, you can heat set as you go, but some, quite often, if I'm looking to get quite a chunky or full coverage, I want a very variegated look. Um, I will obviously get embossing powders onto the um, onto the image and um, start heating them. And while it's molten, I'll sprinkle more in because then I can see I can see where it's going, and you can continue to build your design as you go so if you're wanting to go for a really kind of um, cool metallic look you can keep sprinkling and layering up your powders um, while they're melting right that was definitely the green in fact I'm wondering whether I should be putting the lids on my pots because I might want to do that. I think what I'll do with this, because I'm not looking for a full coverage, I will heat set it, we'll have a look and then we might go in and add a little bit more rather than me sprinkling as I go. effect this is a, a kind of I'm not going to hold up it's a more subtle effect because I've not gone for full coverage but can you see the speckles there I want to add a little bit more just so you can see but you've got the embossing powders just catching the edges um, and some of the tips for example here with the uh, terracotta at the edges of the leaves so yeah it definitely adds a little bit of dimension of course you saw me adding distress oxide to this um, so while that ink that blending ink was still um, damp I could have been sprinkling the powder straight onto it then uh, now that I've heat set once I would have need I would need to reapply the uh, embossing ink but do remember you, you can heat emboss with your um, distresses because they have got a reasonably good open time I'll put a bit more Tuscan terracotta on because I'm liking that. But I don't want to say, I don't want to lose the green being the primary hue here. So a bit of Tuscan terracotta. And remember, I'll have a, a maker's bundle in the shop uh, using uh, with a really fab price on a selection of the items that I've used in today's video. So check out what that is. I, I'm being vague because I don't know as yet, but we'll certainly be putting some of these goodies on sale in store for you. But I'm sure there are ideas here that you either know and it just reminds you of, or will inspire you to have a go with. Just think dyes are 
we can be quite literal with our diaries. And some diaries are intended, aren't they? They're an outline die for a stamp or a sentiment die. But even sentiment dies, you can really customise and make um, make them look really fantastic with different finishes. So yeah, just think, be creative with how you might use your dies. Now I'm not going to put that into a single pot because I forgot to um, take. Um, decamp my terracotta before I put my olive grove so I've got a bit of a mix going on there. I could put that to one side but I have just put it in the bin. Apologies, there wasn't much there. One more burst of heat. And of course, the other fab thing with um, embossing powders on your die cuts is because they end with kind of give you almost kind of plastic coating. They strengthen the die cut as well, so it becomes uh, less flimsy. When it's like a delicate one like this, it becomes quite robust. I think I don't think I'm going to add an awful lot more to it, but what I think I'll do is maybe add a bit of rustic wilderness back in the ink. Um, Obviously the uh, melted embossing powder will resist the ink anyway, but just bring a bit of that deeper green in where there's any areas that haven't got the um, embossing powder on them already. Just to give me some variation in tone. I'm really liking that, just that little bit of darker green. And I could play like this for ages, um, to be honest. I could go in and out with the embossing powders, with the inks, um, really kind of layering until I get a look that I'm happy with. But I think you, know, you can see how, so this is the flat card stock, and then this is the one that we've customized and used our own inks and powders on. And you just get a, it's a much more, um, varied look, you get more depth by customising it with your inks and powders and of course that way it will absolutely match the colour scheme that, you, um, that you're working with. What did I do with that again? So, I think we will layer up our I haven't stuck anything down yet but you can I'm gonna to have to decide now whether I want the dark brown around that central aperture with the one that we've layered line on top of it or whether we go with white I think the dark brown because I think that kind of travels through nicely to the um, tree trunk beneath but Yeah, I think I'm going to go the dark brown. But this is it's nice just to, I, I do like with the wreaths having two or even three um, different layers kind of coming together because it just gets fuller and fuller as we go. So let me do some sticking down and faffing around with my die cuts. And then we'll add some focal points to this page. See you in a second. So I've stuck down the elements that we've been um, putting together for our journal page now. So we've got our two layers of um, the uh, the wreath now uh, attached over the aperture we created. So you can see how that looks. I really like it with the white behind it actually. I'm, I'm in a bit of a dilemma about whether I have the page below white or whether I stick with the tree trunk. I'm looking at it in the camera which is why I'm pausing. So I've stuck this down so it is there. Look how cool that looks as well on the other side. So I could I can decorate this page here and I'll have that fantastic kind of uh, detailing within the circle. 
So I have already uh, stamped and heat embossed a couple of the images from the uh, wonderful woodcut birds by Mabs and Wall. I've cut, I've um, heat embossed the little wren image. Super cute. I mean, it's little as in it's a reasonable size stamp, but of the, of the birds, it's the smallest one in the set. And I've also um, black uh, stamped and clear heat embossed the woodpecker as well, because I'm thinking, and it's funny, isn't it, how these pages start to come together once you once you get working on them. I'm thinking of using my scraps on this opposite page. So an off cut of the, um, of the, of, the uh, tree trunk that we used for here and of course the circle that we cut out of here I think I could put that underneath almost as a spotlight a bit of detail for our woodpecker to be sitting on so I'm thinking that was where that page will go I'm going to add a bit of stenciling and a bit of colour to it but I also want to have some white space on that page which makes me think that our little wren could be tucked into almost like this kind of leafy nest behind behind this kind of aperture this was looking up at the um the woodpecker and then the, one of the sentiments from that stamp set is keep going you got this and that could be in the corner so now i'm looking at it like that i do think actually that tree ring background uh the the bark the tree trunk background works quite well with the um, with the wren sitting in there. What I then need to do is obviously, and this is how my journey it just keeps going and going, is I could then go on and add more detail to uh, this page here where we've got our wren, because obviously when we turn over the page, he'll be kind of floating. So I need to add something to ground him uh, for when we turn that page over. But for now, I think that's, that's looking like it's coming together nicely. So I am going to adhere these pieces down, do a little bit of inking and stenciling on this side, so you will see the finished result in the thumbnail. Um, but the key thing I wanted to just kind of explore today was creating an aperture within your journal pages, so you're looking from one page through to the next, and also customising your die cuts, using your embossing powders, your inks, um, to get the kind of um, the look that you want to suit your page or your project. So. Having done both those things and this page being where it is, I think I'm going to leave it there for this Sunday and you can see the finished result uh, in the photo with this video. Check out the uh, Sunday Maker Bundle which will have a combination of these products on sale in my shop and I really do hope that you like and subscribe to my channel because we uh, put new content on every Sunday, we're live every Wednesday uh, and we really want to grow the channel so that we can reach lots of lovely crafters and get them inspired in using their wonderful products. So I shall see you again very soon and I uh, hope you have a lovely creative day. Bye for now. Thank mm -hmm. you.